My dad used to say to me, if you ever get caught poaching, I'll lose my job. And my mum used to say, yeah, but we ain't going to know dinner, are we? <laughs> you know. I was born in lodgings in one of the council houses in Woodstock. We lived in the slum conditions, basically. My mother, being as my father was ill with haemophilia, mother had to work for quite a lot of the day up at the schoolmaster's house, the junior schoolmaster's house, um, and his wife. I look after their children and do the cooking. We lived on about seven or eight pounds a week, I suppose. We never had no money to spend. We just managed to get our food, what we had. I come home from the school. My mum said, get a loaf, but only cut one slice off it. And I used to get a little slice to start off with. I had a bigger slice. She said, I told you to only take one slice off. You know, I used to pick an apple off an old tree out the back. An apple and a slice were dripping on. There wasn't a lot of food to go in. We had to suffer. My dad used to say to me, if you ever get caught poaching, I'll lose my job. And my mum used to say, yeah, but we ain't going to know dinner, are we? I always remember Saturday mornings. We used to take Toby and the greyhound Sandy. Sandy and Toby we used to take rabbiting over the back by us. And we used to catch a rabbit each. At least a rabbit, one a rabbit each. Else we didn't come home. So we used to go over and get pheasant eggs as well. There was lots of pheasants there. We used to go and collect a few eggs up and they'd cook. You get duck eggs from down the meadows. Duck eggs out in the middle of the willow trees. Because in the middle of the willow trees, the fox couldn't get up. But we used to get down and get our arms down there. If there was a... We used to take about two out of each nest to go home and give our mums and eat and that. I used to go up there with Mickey Dempsey's, Tony Lewis, who was lived up the road from us. And he says, do you want a swan's egg? Duff. Do you want a swan's egg, Lewis? No, no, we get caught. He said, no, you won't. And he, he went there and he pushed his swans off a nest in the floods and he picked out two eggs. We don't want it. And he brought one back. We put it in this tin and we covered it with sawdust. And um, we went home and, um, and we, we put it in a frying pan. It filled the frying pan up. And we cooked it, fried it for about 20 minutes cut it in half and ate it out of the back. We were starving. About that big, about that size. And you had sheets of paper inside it, with little tickets on, like stamps. And as you had one week's butter, a little bit, you had a half a pound or a quarter of a pound of butter per family or something like that. Two pints of milk, as many kids as you got, you had a point between them or something like that. I like the old orange juice, I like the I like the droid egg, things like that, yeah. It was called the British Kitchens, I think it was called. And they were run by ladies from the town. And um not everybody liked them. Some of the wealthy people up in the town, when we sort of they dished up um, rice pudding and um, uh, semolina, what they called what we called frog's born, um, we had usually got an extra one off the posher people because they didn't like frog's born, so we used to get the disc and nip off and get another one. I mean, luckily we had allotments. My dad had, could grow vegetables and salads in the summer. We, we did very well for lettuce, you know, radish, cucumbers, all that sort of stuff. I wasn't very pleased one day when he came in the winter and brought, there was a pile of stinging nettles on the table. I said, what are they for, Dad? You know, about seven or eight. 
He says, that, I'm sorry, bro, and he said, I said, well, I sting, you know. I thought, God, I ain't going to bloody eat that. We did supply a heck of a lot on the land. I mean, we had the Land Armoury girls, they were doing a great job. I worked with the Land Armoury and I was surprised how they worked. I was only a kid, but they were tighter picking, they used to, when we cut the corn and all that. We used to camp out all the summer. We used to have a tent, big tent over there and um, we used to all lay in this tent. And sometimes when the Land Army girls were locked out after 11, they'd been up for a drink with the boys up the town, the older boys, um, they came and slept between us in the, in this tent. Um, we used to have good fun, yeah, go and get a bit scrumping and have a beans on toast and all get down and nestle down and they gone by the morning all back to work. The Royal Engineers came down to live opposite our house in the, which is now the community centre, which we called the Drill Hall. And from there on, we, had a, our time was changed a lot by the by the soldiers because if they had spare food and the cookhouse was right opposite us they used to bring spare food and you know in, in fairness to all of us in the council houses they brought food that was spare for us to have and which was um, very welcome in them days. I mean, we were all the same, in the same position. We all had big families. We lived off friendship. Well, we all shared what we got, you know. Christmas, we used to all have parties, moving the piano along from one house to the other. I mean, the man next door to us had a pig. So we took, we give him our peelings and bits and pieces, so did the rest of the families and they had parts of the pig when it was slaughtered. You know, we ended up with a football, well, a bladder, in the, foot, in the road playing football. And money didn't come into it at all. And we all loved to do things with our hands and play games, make up games. And we all had a good time. 